table 4-2, the humerus. So on the humerus here, we can see a very rounded edge. This is gonna be the head of the humerus. And then on the opposite side of the head right here is our greater tubercle. So our head would have to be facing medial so it can go into the glenoid cavity that we just learned. This is also superior to go up to where the arm comes in, so that makes this inferior. Now for anterior and posterior, we know anterior by this bump right in front, which is our lesser tubercle. So we have the head, lesser tubercle, greater tubercle. Now in between the two tubercles, we have this groove right there, which is called the intertubercular sulcus or groove. Now there's two necks on this bone. This is the only bone that they give two necks. The anatomical neck, so the true neck, is always right around the head, but that's not really where most breaks will occur on bones. And so then they also have the surgical neck, which would be right here where I have my fingers around. The deltoid tuberosity, so our deltoid shoulder muscle, this is where it inserts, is right here on this rough patch of bone. Um, and you can see it's like really porous. So that patch right there is the deltoid tuberosity. And tuberosity, anytime you hear that word, you can know muscle that will attach there. It just fuses out onto that rough patch of bone and stays there. Our radial groove, this is kind of a tricky thing. So you don't really see it in the plastic bones, but on a real bone, you might see it. The radial groove kind of runs kind of below the deltoid tuberosity and it wraps back and diagonal. This is where the radial nerve runs. You don't see the actual groove on the plastic bones and so it's more a figment of your imagination. <laughs> but anything that's below the deltoid tuberosity in a diagonal type fashion, you can know is your radial groove. Now on the anterior side, we know anterior again from the lesser tubercle. If we come down to the inferior part or the distal part of the humerus, anterior we have this guy which is the coronoid fossa which is gonna we remember we learned coronoid process on the mandible this is our coronoid fossa and then on the back side we have the olecranon fossa so back to the front here we also have a radial fossa which is going to be right above the capitulum you can see it a little better on this bone right here there's a little fossa right there. That is the radial fossa. So we have the coronoid fossa and the radial fossa. Now, medial epicondyle. So I'm gonna actually teach you these two names first and then we'll talk about epicondyles. If you see, there's a very rounded kind of a guy right there. And then this whole thing that looks like an hourglass is another structure. So the rounded guy is the capitulum the hourglass structure is what is called the trochlea. So capitulum, trochlea. These are respectively, so here's our head up on the humerus, just to give you reference. So this is medial. This guy is technically the medial condyle and this is the lateral condyle. We don't call them that, we give them specific names because we wanted to. I didn't invent anatomy, so I'm not really sure why, but that makes these two things the epicondyles. Epi means upon. So this would be our lateral epicondyle, and this would be our medial epicondyle. The one that sticks out more is the medial epicondyle. So why we had, I just had students ask me before, why does the humerus only have epicondyles and not condyles? These are the condyles for the humerus. We just call them something different. 